almost non-existent in the early 1900s had risen by the mid-century to be the number one killer in America. And notably in 1955, President Eisenhower has a heart attack in the Oval Office. And he uh, he's then, you know, not, he's, he's taken away from, he's, he has to go on bed rest for 10 whole days. The whole nation is transfixed and focused on this question like what is causing heart disease because at the time there was no accepted uh, cause that had been established and there were a number of competing hypotheses there was this idea that it might be the rising amount of auto exhaust that had come about from more cars um, on the roads it could have uh, people thought it was a, a the result of vitamin deficiency um, people thought that it was the type A personality, somebody going around and screaming at everybody and then having a heart attack and dying. Those were all viable theories, but it was Ansel Keys through his basically his networking and his personal charisma and his ability to, as even his friends say, argue anybody to the, to the death, that he was able to promote his idea into a uh, importantly you know with leading doctors of the time including eisenhower's doctor but probably the most significant event was when he got onto the nutrition call sorry the nutrition committee of the american heart association so the american heart association was the most authoritative group then and probably one would say now telling people what to do about heart disease Ansel Keys was able to swing that group around in the course of a year um, based really on no data, but he was able to convince this group to endorse the diet heart hypothesis and tell everybody, well, at that time it was just men, tell men, 1961, avoid eating saturated fat, replace saturated fat in meat and eggs with polyunsaturated vegetable oils in order to avoid a heart attack. That is like the little kernel of advice that grew into this huge um, oak tree of, <laughs> of recommendations that we now have all over the world. And because that has been our advice for now 60 years, it's extremely hard to disentangle because it's really a kind of a very firm established dogma. Um, so, but just to continue that through line, what happened after 1961? Well, many governments around the world, including yours in Australia, they realized that although this recommendation had gone out, there really was no rigorous evidence for it, which is to say clinical trials, randomized controlled clinical trials, that is the only kind of evidence that can show cause and effect. So these governments undertook large, the really, some of the most ambitious, largest, longest clinical trials that have ever been done in nutrition in the 1960s and 70s. And these studies, uh, they, you know, they had, they, they were interpreted to imply that saturated fats did in fact cause heart disease. But if, and so that was sort of what was accepted um, for decades. But due to my work, the work of uh, journalist Gary Taubes, we went back and analyzed those trials and looked at them. You know, one of them had never been properly randomized. Another one had not controlled for smoking. Another one had let people wander in and out of their study and not really kept track of them. There, was a, there were studies that had been ignored where they showed they had to end the study early because people were dying. <laughs> people on the vegetable oil diet were, were dying. Um, so it turned out that these trials did not say what they were supposed to. So that's what came out in my book and in um, Gary Tabb's book, um, Good Calories, Bad Calories. And that was in the early, so, you know, that happened in like the 2000s, right? And so now, the last decade has really seen an kind of a real sea change in the science of saturated fat because scientists have been alerted to these clinical trials and they realize that they have been ignored, lost. Um, somehow we, we never paid attention to these studies in a rigorous way. So now there are at least 20 uh, papers that are have 
done systematic reviews or meta analyses they're called, but you know, really rigorous reviews of these clinical trials. And what have they concluded? They have concluded that the data do not support the diet heart hypothesis, which is to say the idea that saturated fat and dietary cholesterol cause heart disease is not supported by the evidence. Even though that idea has been tested, it's one of the most tested hypotheses in the history of nutrition science, but the results do not support that hypothesis. So, you know, when you really test a hypothesis at that level and it, and you, you get what's called null results, you have to just move on and say, okay, you know, we have to look at some other ideas. But just to emphasize how important this literature is from the last decade, these 20 review papers include a paper um, that I <clears throat> was somewhat involved in, which is by a group of authors that include four former members of the expert committees who actually wrote our US dietary guidelines. So these are people who are saying, we wrote the guideline, but now we think that's wrong. We didn't know about this evidence. We've reconsidered it. And that paper was published by the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, which is a very prestigious, it's called a high impact journal, read by cardiologists. It was called, it was um, branded as a state of the art review by the journal. It was selected by the editor in chief of that journal as one of the most important papers of the year that it came out. Um, I'm thinking it's maybe uh, 2019 now, but, um, so that's an extremely important paper. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, what we have found is that the scientific community, different groups of scientists from around the world, these 20 papers have really concluded that we got it wrong on saturated fats. And the challenge now is to get that science to rise up and be considered by our, our government agencies in charge of these guidelines. And there's just a lot of uh, resistance to that or stubbornness or difficulty kind of dealing with this change in our understanding on saturated fats and this new data. So we can talk about it. That gets into the realm of politics. But in like in the scientific world, <laughs> there has really been a firm, a pretty firm understanding that saturated fats, uh, we just we made a mistake on saturated fats. Yeah. former editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal, which is the oldest and most prestigious general journals in the world, Fiona Godley said at a conference, you know, I think we really have to, uh, we owe an apology to people. We just, we, we made a mistake on saturated fats. Yeah. And so so now with the, the sort of on the political side of things, is this is this more that there's just this this just weight of inertia behind this and just so many people just have believed this that it's just hard to sort of change that around or are there people really trying to stick to this uh, for one reason or another and trying to, to keep that information away from people well this is where we enter into the somewhat unsavory world of politics of yeah. nutrition which is to say um there are multiple agendas uh that are that resist change. So we can just, um, you know, there, there, there is of course kind of the, the difficulty of bureaucracies being more or less sclerotic and mm -hmm. difficult to change, difficult to be seen as flip-flopping on important issues with their public because that is causes an erosion of trust. And there are, there are hundreds of nutrition scientists who have devoted their entire careers to, um, you know, to, to this idea that saturated fats are bad, who are reluctant, understandably, to reverse uh, themselves on an entire published um, history, you know, intellectual history that they've, that they've established their careers on. So there's that. There's also the fact that, you um, saturated fats tends to raise your LDL cholesterol. That's the so-called bad cholesterol. And that the biggest blockbuster drug of the history of the pharmaceutical industry has been statins and statins lower your LDL cholesterol. So there is a pharmaceutical investment in maintaining the LDL cholesterol model of heart disease. 
And under that model, saturated fats are bad for health, um, even though, as we've seen most recently in the, the Verda study out of the University of Indiana, that over the long, that's a five, they have five year data showing that the rise in LDL is transient and it, and it goes down over time. So, um, so there's a kind of a pharmaceutical investment in the saturated fat LDL cholesterol model. There's also the interest of the vegetable oil industry, which, um, mm. because remember vegetable oils, we've been told to eat these vegetable oils instead of saturated fats. So there's, and these are some of the largest companies in the world that have included Unilever, Bungie, ADM, Monsanto, and all the soybean growers who, uh, it's mainly soybean oil that people consume that are, whose products end up in these oils. Those are huge multinational companies who do not want to see, uh, you know, their market share decline in any way. I mean, they have seen in the U.S. at least, I'm sure there's a similar curve in Australia, but we, the, the, the biggest increase in any foodstuff over the 20th century has been vegetable oils. We went from eating virtually zero of them to now eight or 9% of all of our calories come from vegetable oils. Since 1970 in the US, we've increased them by 90% our consumption. So there's that interest, which is, you know, resistance to um, losing market share. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, there's, there are other interests. There are uh, there, the tremendous push towards veganism, um, which we see, which has many different financial and ethical and ideological movements behind it. For them, saturated fats, the limit on those fats is what keeps down consumption of animal foods, which is important to them because they feel like that's an unethical to eat those, or it might be harming the environment from their perspective. So, I mean, that's just a snapshot of some of the interests involved um, in this. Yes. So it is, it is extremely hard to change, but I will say it's becoming harder and harder to resist the science. I mean, a, in a paper that I uh, was a co-author on, we, uh, we analyzed our own US dietary guidelines, the expert committee and their recent review on saturated fats for our 2020 guidelines, the most recent version. Their review, we can, we, I looked at all the studies that they had used for their review and it, it I found that like something between 70 and a hundred percent of their studies, depending on what the outcomes were, did not support their conclusion. So the vast majority did not support the idea that saturated fats cause heart disease. And yet their conclusion was the evidence that saturated fats cause heart disease is strong. Yeah. Right, top level recommendation, all those 70 to 100% of the studies that they provided for that recommendation showed exactly the opposite from what they said. So, um, you know, so this is an, this is an area that's a lot of interest pushing against any liberation of saturated fats and, uh, and the science is clearly not being heard. Yeah. I'm just going to point out one point because I, th I think that, you know, when you talk to um, this vegan guest, um, that the arguments that they that are often um, put forward and is that saturated fats cause inflammation, saturated fats um, have negative effects on cholesterol. But remember, these are all inflammation and cholesterol are what's called um, intermediary outcomes, right? They're important to measure, but they don't always predict heart attacks or death. And so it's really important to know that these large clinical trials that I talked about from the 1960s and 70s, they went long enough or more powered, and it means, in other words, they had enough people in them to look at heart attacks and death, right? Death is the ultimate outcome, as we might call it in science, because it's really important to know, maybe you are, are not having as many, maybe you're having more heart attacks, but what if it causes cancer instead, which is in fact what these trials found in some instances, which is that the people on the high vegetable oil diets were dying at higher rates of cancer. Mm -hmm. So you might be seeing some of these intermediary effects on inflammation and LDL cholesterol, but really 
when you have hard outcome data on heart attacks and death, that trumps any other data you might have. It might be that the data, this intermediary data was not quite correct or transitory as we found out with LDL cholesterol. So really it's the hard, firm outcomes, what we call hard outcomes of heart attacks and death that were studied, we have data on, and they showed that saturated fats when replaced by vegetable oils do not uh, reduce cardiovascular events or reduce um, mortality.